So this is the true story of the Dolly Mixtures, who um, in 1972, their husband was diagnosed, one of their husbands, Ken, uh, was diagnosed with bowel cancer. And so these eight amazing women, one of which was his wife Margaret and his sister Hilda, created this, decided to create this variety act called the Dolly Mixtures to raise money for cancer research. But originally they were doing it so they could put some stuff in the hospital uh, bearing in mind there was no chemo then really, 72, uh, and what's amazing is they, they worked in a lot of their neighbours, originally there was 12 of them, uh, but the eight of them had carried on for 15 years raising money for cancer research and also doing these variety chats, so they did comedy songs, sketches, and they just, they carried on and carried on and they didn't get one penny for themselves, everything they earned in the clubs were, went to cancer research. And also the clubs then in the 70s, 80s, and predominantly now actually, is, uh, were male dominated. So it was a very hostile environment for women. The only women in the clubs then were strippers, and they weren't even allowed in the bingo. So for them to do that at that time, and, and basically just carry on and carry on, they did four nights a week, and they were none of them were performers. They were a uh, Sunday school teacher, they were just, they were housewives, they had kids, husbands, and they had jobs as well. And then to go out in the evening, four nights a week. It's an extraordinary, astonishing story. I mean, this story uh, has been uh, in, imagined for the stage by Tom Kelly and John Miles, who's a legendary singer from the 70s, who's an extraordinary at writing a song, anyway. And three years ago, I was asked to be the choreographer, so I did all the dances. And my partner Dave is the MD, and he's been the MD at Custom Size for Panto and stuff for about 20 years, I think. And he's done many musicals. Uh, John and Tom have written a lot of musicals. And then this year, um, Ray asked me if I wanted to come and direct it as well, as well as do the choreography, and do what I wanted with it. So as I was thinking about it, I'm trying to reimagine it. You know, to me, the heart of the tale is is the Ken and Margaret and Hilda, and how their responsibility to do something beyond themselves, to be to be more than they demonstrated. That to me was the the kernel of the story. And also, I have such a a love of a variety and. Uh, working men's clubs, I used to sing in working men's clubs myself in, in the mid 80s where this story ends. So to me, to, to create an environment that was about, to me, to, variety acts and comedy and my back catalogue of watching uh, Two Ronnies and Busby Barkley movies and Carmen Miranda and formations and formational dancing from the 70s. I just literally took all of that that's been in my head for a long, long time and just unpacked it and reimagined it. And to me, to, to have done this show like this, but I'll still to be able to keep the heart of what was important, which is uh, about cancer and a man dying from cancer and what that meant to people around him. And also to, to then be able to bounce off that, where people then go to clubs and make people laugh. And this story's got all of that, it's got all the pathos as well, because it runs through the minor strike as well. And all of that kind of heart and soul of living in a community with people and literally being so stoic about life that everything is important and everything is unimportant in a way. They just crack on and carry on. And that's what this story is about. And the dog, it's like weird, I'm an actor and when you perform, you go and leave there and you've got your real life. And this is like that really, but they, they had real life, but they weren't even performers. So to do that for 15 years is, above and beyond the Call of Duty and then to get to have raised £100,000 is, I mean, it's remarkable, it's extraordinary. Well, I think the reason why this story is still relevant is, I mean, we live in a, an era as well where we're talking a lot about gender and women's roles and how important it is to, to understand who you are. But I always think it's really important to look back as well to see, you know, if we're having moments about the suffragettes, if we look at what's, what's been 
what's happened in history to allow us as women to to forge forward and be more than we demonstrate. These women, these darling sisters, were, did just that. And these are stories that aren't told. So you, you may get the famous stories about suffragettes and people who forge forward, but the ordinary people doing ex being extraordinary in their ordinary lives, I call it, is we need to celebrate them. And it's a unique story. It's not, we're not saying this, everyone is like this. We're saying, look at this, what happened in history. This place that we're not looking at, regional places, so important that we look at the regions as well. And sometimes we never look towards communities who come together and we look inside that community and go, wow, look at those extraordinary women who don't even realise how extraordinary they are. So they're astonished when their story is being put on stage. And they're still astonished. And I was sat with the three of them today, uh, Doris and Betty and uh, Hilda. And I've never seen people take an audible gasp at certain things, which to me is, is a testament to being me reimagining it and then being surprised. If I can surprise them, and they know this story so well, they know the show from the last time, because they came to see it loads of those times. And just the depth at which these, these actors have worked so hard. Oh, this cast is amazing. This crew at this theatre is astonishing. We did this in two weeks and a few days. And it's just amazing. This, the detail in the work is astonishing to me. The commitment to this story. And we do have a responsibility, all of us, because it's beyond us, this story. And to have real people that you're telling their stories sat next to you. And then to turn around and literally reach out and go, I haven't stopped crying. I haven't stopped laughing. Then that's all that matters. I've done our job. Anything.